So check this out. I messed up up for the June sync up for the Rays of Wisdom, right? But I got it corrected. July is up now. It is going to be July 16th at 5 p.m. Um, I don't have a topic yet. I'm gonna think of a topic, but go ahead and sign up now. Okay, so we back. I'm a little bit earlier than normal. Hey, y'all, hey. What's up? How you doing, Ray of Sunshines? I am your girl, Talisa Ray, wife style coach. We are reviewing Ready to Love, season four, episode number 11, Unfinished Business. Child, the business is finished. It was concluded. Close, complete, last episode. But all right, let's just get into it. So we pick up where we left off where uh, AJ is seemingly about to give Kyra the ax. Tell her she's not ready to love. Well, he told her, you're not ready to love. And AJ is asking, do you want to be here with me? Yes, I do. Girl, you don't. Girl, you just want to stay a little longer. And that, that, that's okay. That's okay because everybody knows, except for you, that you really wanted Jason. Somehow you weren't honest with yourself and you really, you really wanted Jason. Anyway, he was like, I changed my mind. I want you to stay. I don't want to quit holding your hand. Mm -hmm. That's the decision that he made. He said that he felt like this is his second chance and he didn't want to let go of it so soon. That it's been four years since that first fiasco of a date that they had. Four years? You've been waiting on a chance for four years? Sir, you're lying. You have not been waiting for four years because you could have had a date with Kyra. You could have called her. You could have had a conversation. Sir, okay, maybe you didn't have the opportunity whatever and so Kyra tells us also in her diary cam or whatever those things are called she talks about um why the process is taking so long why she needs to see it all the way through to the end because you know she wants the next time to be the right time it to be you know her husband essentially that's what she says I'm all like girl I don't think that that's really what ready to love is like well, maybe it is after watching this episode. Maybe it is. Maybe that's what they, maybe that's the premise behind it. These people after five weeks are supposed to find love in five weeks after dating several people. I'm getting beside myself, but I'm going to keep saying. You can fall in love or want to be committed to somebody in five weeks. That is a possibility. But that's when you are spending time with them solely, only them, all the time. It is like um, a relationship on speed, right? It is, uh, help me out. It progresses a lot faster because you guys spend so much time together. So, you know, listen, even Kyra has said and admitted that, um, she never chose AJ. And so for him to do this was big. And I'm all like, you never chose him. And so now you telling him that you do want to be with him, that you're going to stay with him, but you've never chose him. How contradictory is that for yourself? So, oh, now he's choosing me and I get to stay because Jason don't want me. I'm gonna just stay and choose him though I never chose him. That made sense what I said? I hope so. Uh, let's see. She asks him why, why? And this is when he tells her about the four years and having the second date and, you know, wants to see where it goes. He was, they gave, got a little hug and that was their first little peck, little kiss. That was the first kiss we seen Kyra give anybody. I don't remember, or no, 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 I lie, I lie. Her and Jason did have a kiss at that art thing that they went to that he had his friend close down and let them do, which I thought was very nice, right? Nice date. So now AJ has the task of telling Alexis that she's gotta go. I think I better let her go. Yeah, looks like another love TKO. Listen. Tells, he tell he sits down with her and she's all like, I'm nervous. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. He's like, don't cry. Because you know, at first she's like, I feel like he's about to tell me that I'm the one. So 
that's not what he say though he sits down and he tells her pretty much you know how she's been upstanding and that she's amazing and that i think we're gonna be friends no 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 no, no. i think we're gonna be in each other's life for a long time Listening to that makes you think that he chose you and you know she wanted to be chosen and then he hits her with but um, You're not ready to love and I'm so glad that she said no, I'm ready to love Just not you I'm glad you know cuz that would have been me. I would have been checking somebody too like oh, that's so cute Yeah, listen I am ready to love it's just that my love isn't here right but what I liked most about this was when Alexis was talking in her little diary cam what are those things called because they're not confessional but maybe they are anyway if there's an appropriate name for them let me know down below in the comments i like that she said that she learned a lot about herself and what she learned is that she needs to love herself more and that she needs to love her um the way god sees her right that's i just told somebody that the other day you would think i would have watched this but no that she needs to learn to love herself the way God does, the way God sees herself, way to see herself the way God sees her, and to love herself that way too. And that she realizes that she needs to seek God and all His righteousness. These are her words, not mine. Um, and and He's going to bring to her the love that she needs. Oh, sorry, sorry. It was that she's not ready to receive what she is requesting. And so she has more work to do. Listen, I, kind of, I, I, I commend her for that because that's what we've been saying the whole time, right? Um, for me, pick me, pick me, choose me. Um, do you like me? Am I your number one? Shows that you have some internal work to do. Shows that maybe there's some things that, you know, you're not as confident about as you think. Comparison, your, comparing yourself and talking down and competing and all this other th these other things that she has been doing kind of showed us that maybe there's some work that needs to be done, right? And I'm glad that she said that for herself. I, I'm glad that she's deciding to love on her, to focus on her and on God. And then when the time is right, you know, her husband will reappear. I really hope she does that. Um, Cause it seems like she has a great spirit. Just some things, you know, just were a little off. Like, you know, some insecurities are showing. Like, and listen, all of us have them. So I'm not coming down on her cause we all got our shit that we have to work through or that we have worked through. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not that we come down on her. It's just that we want her, specifically me, I want her to win as a black woman. I want all black women to find the love that they want, that they choose, that they desire. I want it to be healthy and work for them. And so I think that she's on her, on the way to that. That was a lot of talking about her. <laughs> um, do you think that he made the right choice in keeping Kyra and letting go Alexis? Y'all let me know down below in the comments. I feel like either choice he would have made would have been the wrong choice. But what, what do I know, right? What do I know? He's not already, he's not really ready for a commitment, but he's ready to work towards one. That's how I feel. Kyra is too indecisive right now about the things that she wants, or maybe she isn't and she's just stringing these people along. And then Alexis just wasn't ready. She got some healing to do. So for me, I think that either choice he would have made would have been wrong. Y'all let me know down below in the comments and uh, tell me if you agree or not. You know, I'd like to hear your opinions. Um. So we at the ladies lounge, right? And and Liz is shocked like, I know you fucking lying that Kyra is still here. Like, wait a minute. I thought that Alexis and AJ had a thing going. We got a thing going on. Anyway, so I'm thinking like, evidently some things were exhibited, but remember Alexis and Liz shared a room together. And so that's how she probably had gotten that, you know, thought anyway. So Tommy comes in and he lets them know, listen, you got one last date. Make it an intimate date, spend time to, um, together and get past the idea of being in a relationship to actually being in a relationship. Cause it is a difference. The idea of what do I want? What are my expectations? Is he going to meet my needs or she? Um, are they what I'm looking for and what I want? Are we going to be able to do my three C's, commit, compromise, and communicate? And that's however it looks for you. You can. Kyra says she really uh, doesn't have a, a real decision about what she wants. 
um, and she just wants to see how things go, that she needs to have a conversation with Jason over his choice and him choosing Liz and as to why, because when she left the tennis court with him, that didn't seem the direction that things were going. It didn't, girl. Cause for me, it did. I mean, so listen ladies, it's one thing to just hear the words somebody are saying to you, if somebody is saying to you, it's another thing to listen and to feel with the energy that is in the room. Like you should be able to read what a person is saying. And for me, I feel like Jason was saying, what is it that you want? Because he wanted to choose her, but I needed to know that you're gonna choose me too. And what she has to understand is that her indecisiveness is the thing that made him or helped him make a choice. Both women were, you know, great choices, amicable choices, great women, had great things to offer, but because she was indecisive and she was not talking about how she felt, he did not want to be out there on a limb, sort of like her. Like, I don't wanna be looking stupid. I don't wanna choose you and you don't choose me. I said that last week, remember, remember? Go check it out if you don't. So then Liz is on the side like, you know what? I don't like how Kyra's trying to make it seem like I'm number two. Like I was number two. I was second choice. Liz, you were. I'm sorry. You've got a lot to offer. But his friends told him that you carried God with you, that you that they could feel the sanctification. He agreed. You were second choice, babe. That doesn't mean that you are a bad choice, right? Mm, I'm just saying, somebody tell her she was number two until Kyra didn't make a decision. Until Kyra could not make a decision. Somebody, somebody tell her. She didn't see it for herself by now though. So he says, you know, one of the guys have to leave and I'm all like, how? How sway is four women and four men. How is that gonna happen? Who's gonna leave? They all seem, are seemingly connected. So we see Joelle goes, goes to Vernicia's house, honey. Her, she got her shit laid, you know what I'm saying? Got some wine and some water glasses. Those are water glasses, ladies, okay? Anyway, you go to the fancy, when you go to the fancy restaurants, those are water glasses. Nonetheless, I love them. I have some in my house. Know the difference between water glasses, wine glasses, and champagne flutes, okay? I'm not judging her. Maybe that's what she had, but I'm just saying those was water glasses. Nonetheless, she made dinner, some macaroni and cheese. I don't know what that was. I don't know what that meat was. Was it braised short ribs? Didn't look like it was a steak. I'm not sure, but the food looked delicious. They have a conversation and, you know, Joel says he feels like they've moved past the chaos from last week. And the thing that they uh, can agree on is that they seem to be able to over overcome anything or that it shows that they can overcome anything. And y'all still hollering that Joel does not like Vernicia. Y'all still saying it. I mean, listen, they do sometimes seem a little mismatched. She does sometimes seem like she has rose colored glasses, but I think that he has so he may not be like she is, right, with stars in her eyes or hearts in her eyes, but I think that he has some attraction to her. There's something about her that he likes and is going to explore further. And when you hear the people like talk about them, they talk about they move and operate like they already married or that they're a couple. He asked her, well, where do we go from here? And she's all like, uh, sir, I'm asking you that because you the one that didn't choose me. I've always chosen you. He gonna say, you always been my number one. Have I? Have I? <laughs> These dudes is slick like the dudes in real life. Be careful, listen carefully, watch actions and energy too. But she says that she feels like, you know, that they're in a good place and that he, you know, he means that everything else in the past is in the past, okay? So we gonna let her, we gonna let this play out. Y'all say that he don't like her. She feels like he does. Evidently, there's some things that we are not seeing that is happening and connecting them together, right? So let's let it play out. Y'all don't feel no different? Do y'all still feel like Joelle don't like Vernicia? Y'all let me know down below in the comments because you know I need to know. Inquiring minds need to know. I'm inquiring minds. Okay, so this is probably my favorite date with Liz and Jason. You know, green is my color. And I see why, because it looks hella good on Liz. 
and I'm probably a shade darker than her so yeah I feel like that's what it looked like on me I thought it looked really good on her she looked really nice but she always looks very classy um and he honestly she elevates him just her standing next to him elevates him right uh baby let me upgrade you just in your presence okay like you some women do that for you anyway in his little confessional he says he's glad that he made the decision and chose liz that it was the right decision and he's happy that he gets to focus on one person and one person alone like it was a lot trying to juggle and figure out what it is that he wanted or what they wanted and which direction that needed to be taken um but then they sit down and she brings up kyra now i know kyra had her feeling away in the lounge um he listen i don't know how i feel about this i'm gonna work through this with y'all because here's here's her dilemma she said that um she asked him if kyra had chose you or said something differently would you have chosen her would there be a different outcome and he said no you would have been it, it would this would have been the same decision he said that his mind was made up and that he needed clarity and direction um because the way she was moving seemed disingenuous right so here's where I, I have an issue you know i don't like i don't want you bringing up i don't like you bringing up i don't like for women to bring up the other women that they're dating like you know you can ask are you dating or uh, is this serious what are we doing you can ask all those questions but if you find out that they are dating someone else like in this ish, in this instance i'm not big on asking questions about their relationship because the relationship that i'm cultivating and i'm concerned about is mine and so here's where my dilemma comes in i don't in one hand i don't think that she should have asked he's already said you're the one you're the one for me right he's already told you that so you can stand on that who cares about what ifs because if he said to you yes i would have i would have chosen differently would you have gotten up and walked away maybe maybe but why would you want to put yourself in that position he has chosen you he has made a decision you have made a decision and you should move forward with how you feel about the decision that he's made does he feel like he's with you is he in this or is his mind somewhere else that should be the driving force not whether or not a decision that would have been coulda shoulda woulda if she did that no no because honestly would the dude have said yeah i would if she would have said she chooses me i want to be with you i would have chose her i don't think so because that would have ruined what you guys have right now so i understand on one hand uh i mean on one hand i feel like yeah don't what are we doing like you 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 you're stirring a pot that could, could cause you some angst and some pain and some hurt the what ifs because he's with you now and it feels genuine to you it feels like you guys are connecting if you didn't feel like you were connecting then okay you should just get up and walk away right but then on the other hand the curiosity is i want to make sure that you're choosing me that that's the other side right but like i said before just a few minutes ago it's about the connection and the energy now so if he feels like he's there with you if he feels like you guys are connected if it feels right and it feels good and you're not questioning uh why his choice was or if you were second choice with him like you was like you act like it was second choice if you're not questioning that while you're with him or before this there's no reason to bring up miss kyra it is maybe that was the producers telling her to ask that question because i just don't see liz as the type of woman to be asking so what about if kyra would have said i just don't see that so anyway y'all let me know down below in the comments what you think about that did she would you that's that that's the question because we can't say what she would do but would you have asked the same question if the if it was a different answer would you have chosen differently fellas you can ask answer that question too as it as it would relate to you as a man let me know down below in the comments but my favorite part because i didn't talk all the way through and we already know this is going to be about 40 minutes long um my favorite part was when he got up from the table and he came back and he brought one single white rose with baby baby's breath i feel like he could have left that baby's breath away and just came with a single roll white rose on the stem like that would have been perfect but the sentiment is still there you know that one single rose it seems a, a lot of roses uh, some kind of bouquet there we go or an arrangement or a single rose 
ladies let the fellas know what it is down below in the comments but anyway um the part that got me he says i've only given this a white rose to two other people in my life my mother and my stepmother and so i want to give this to you you will be the third sort of right and i'm giving you this rose because you have been pure you have been honest you have been resilient i don't know if i like the word resilient like i got to fight through some stuff but hold on let me i'm getting beside myself he should have used consistent maybe that would have been better for my spirit nonetheless it's not my rose and i was still moved um you are a pure you have a pure heart and you are a pure woman uh you are worth it and worthy of pursuing now listen i get it i know that i'm worthy of pursuing i know that i'm a, a good woman but even though my love language is not words of affirmation it is nice to hear that someone sees you they value you and they understand your worth it is it feels good if y'all wasn't moved by that because y'all feel like he's faking the funk or whatever, shame on you. Be in the moment. Even if they acted and all this other shit y'all be saying, right? It's like watching your favorite movie. You're moved by certain lines that people say. I was moved. It was very much so endearing to me. She said that before I went into this process, I prayed to God that there is a man that sees me and sees my heart. And baby, if he not saying stuff that aligns with that, she was crying and shit. Y'all, it was very touching for me. And I hope that he is being genu genuine. And I hope that they are still moving in the direction of commitment. You know, I, I'm, I'm really hopeful for her. She really wants a thing that is good for her. Right? She really is. You know, I ain't a Bible thumper, but he who finds a wife finds a good thing. You know, her children call her blessed, crown full of jewels. She makes clothes for her family. They praise her at the gates. Like, all of those good things that I'm paraphrasing, I feel like Liz embodies. That like Liz has been waiting and, and patiently and uh, just doing work on herself. Because, baby, when I tell you that woman had it together in that lounge both times, mouth shut very stoic face though she could have probably read kyra a new one but did not that tells you that that is a woman of grace and not only for herself but i'm giving you grace too because i understand that your feelings is hurt ho <laughs> anyway then we see amber and kg he talks about ron and he asks about ron because he needs clarity because people were asking him are you okay are you okay blah 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 after the kiss um he needs some validation some clarity and some reassuring and that is exactly what amber does she apply she provides reassurance for kg and i was like dude you finna bust a tear right now because what i saw who am i to say when it's appropriate to cry forgive me we were in the moment i guess i just didn't feel the moment it was not for me to feel it was not my moment forgive me he said he was about to cry because it was what he needed he needed her to say out loud that he chose that she chose him to reassure her him that he was that she was not fooling with ron that she had cut off communication off with him all of that um so he needed that you know his his love language might be words of affirmation might be so i'm gonna let him have it it was what he needed for reassurance to move forward with her. Conversation got a little more light. You know, he was like, how many babies you want? You know, I want two or three. I ain't never a three or four, two or three. I ain't never asked you that before. She was like, oh, you know, I would want one, but after I got married. Honey, and then he dropped a bomb on us. He was like, I'm not having sex right now. I'm practicing semen retention right now. Meaning he he celibate. And when I hear semen retention, to me that means he's not even masturbating. He's not even jacking off. Semen retention means I'm letting it load up. I mean, tell me if that if that makes sense. Cuz you could be celibate and still please yourself. But he's saying semen retention. To me, that sounds like I'm holding all the cards in. I'm letting it get full. I mean, for me, that's what I got out of it. 
she was shocked by it. This was the first conversation that they had about, I guess, sex. One of y'all last week it made mention about they must not know each other as well as they've been saying and talking like they say because this should have been a conversation that has come up. I mean, how soon do y'all talk about sex? How soon are y'all having that conversation? Right away? Third date? Y'all so, you know, y'all reminded me that this was a five week process. So listen, I'm just looking like, she looking like it's a no for me. Like I know a lot of y'all women is like, yeah, that's, you know, for me, I'm not practicing celibacy. For me, I'm not. I'm not waiting. If the chemistry is right, if I feel you, like that's just where I am in my life. I don't feel everybody I meet though. So that's a, that's a whole nother thing. Nonetheless, I mean, y'all might be looking at him sideways cause he's celibate. But when a woman says she's celibate, y'all be like, oh, it's cool. So like, he is doing something and he is standing by it. He's saying that he wants to protect his sexual energy because it is the most important energy that we as humans have. Okay, so, you know, soul ties and that shit. All that shit is real. Soul ties, dropping off your spirit, especially when you deposit it in the people. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There, there is some connection and energy that does transfer in the moment. I mean, your bodies is touched, you intertwine, heartbeat, breathing, all that kind of stuff connects you in a way that just sitting next to you doesn't necessarily connect you. Nonetheless, listen, if he wants to be celibate, so be it. But she all like, hey, yo, listen, y'all can't change your mind. It's a maybe, you know, being around me, I'm gonna make you want to. Like, I'm gonna just say this. If the role was reversed, we would be feeling some kind of way if he has said, oh, when you're around me, I'm gonna make you wanna give it up. Give it to me, baby. We would be hollering, respect her choices. Or wouldn't we? Y'all, I'm just saying, and I don't want us to have that double standard. If the man wants to be celibate, let him be celibate. And if he feels like you're worthy for the releasing of the semen, then so be it, right? But respect his boundaries or no? Nah. Y'all let me know down below in the comments. I just don't want us to be out here as ray of sunshines, flip flopping, and because of gender, gender roles, gender identity, whatever it is, I don't want us to, to have a double standard. So if what's good for him, it's good for her, right? We always say what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Same thing, what's good for the gander is good for the goose. So she should respect his boundaries um, and not push too heavy. But if it's something you can't deal with, honey, listen, let it be. Go on about your business, I understand it. And they get some kind of like playful banter and he's all like, I'm backed up, I'm backed up. You know, it's gonna be hard, blah, blah, blah. I'm all like, are they playing? And y'all say that Amber is a plant and that they brought him back with KG because that they're plants, you know what I'm saying? See, I don't think she likes him. You don't think he's real, that this relationship is real. Y'all feel like it's a fake. Y'all really feel that way. So then we see in Kyra and AJ on their little date. And Kyra and her little diary cam admits that all her eggs were in the Jason basket. Why, y'all? Because she liked Jason and she, hold on, she liked Jason. Oh, I did, I wrote it here. So I'm gonna tell y'all, she should have been honest with Jason. She said that she had, you know, last time I think she had said, you've always been my top, but that wasn't enough. Being, I guess not for Jason. Anyway, and watching them, I really feel like he digs her, that he really likes her. Like, I really feel like there's a genuine connection between the two of them. So she asks him, do you feel like you made the right decision? Now, I'm really hoping that this is the producers telling these ladies to ask that, because I don't give a fuck if you think you made the right decision. You've made the right decision. You've chosen me. Like, the fuck? <laughs> you have chosen me, and to me, I am the right decision. But, you know, I think that partly she's asking that because she's not sure about her decision. You know that thing we do? We deflect. Not deflect, but project. We project what we're feeling onto other people instead of saying, 
maybe I made the wrong decision. I feel like I'm still in a quandary, AJ. I really still feel a way about Jason and him choosing Liz. Like, we project a lot. Try not to do that, try not to do that. Just say how you feel. He, when she asked that, he, his reply was, it's not about did I right, make the right decision. His reply to her was, it's not about whether or not I made the right decision, but am I going to regret the decision later that I made? Am I gonna have what ifs? What if I had done this? Should I have done this differently? And if you've had those reservations, then you probably have made the wrong decision. So pretty much saying that if he had chosen Alexis, he would have been like, well, what if I would have, what if I had chosen Kyra? What if, you know, how would things have worked out? And so the wrong decision would have been Alexis and the right decision would have been Kyra is his point. I can see it. I can see it. Have y'all ever made a decision and then been like, well, what if, well, what if I had done this differently? Well, what if, what if? If if was a fifth, we'd all be drunk. Ah, the one thing I know for sure, two things for certain in all my years of living is the fact that whatever decision I have made was the decision that needed to be made. It was the right decision at the time. I can't have no regrets about the shit that I did in the past. I mean, I could ask for forgiveness. I could see that they were wrong in the past, but it must have been something I needed to do. There must have been a lesson that needed to be learned. It might be the exact way I'm supposed to go, right? We make the decisions that are right for us at the time. That's the way I feel. Y'all can feel differently, and if you do, let me know down below in the comments. So, you know, he's telling her the things that say that I'm interested in you and I wanna pursue you and date you. Like, he's telling her, like, you got all of me now. This is where I'm at. I'm showing you, right? To me, he has a different feel about him that he's made the decision for Kyra, though Kyra has always been his decision, I think, from day one. So Kyra has this Adonis of a man sitting in front of her, pouring out how he feels about her. You know, that he wants to, you know, see where this goes. Glad about the opportunity and all she can think about is she, you know, I really need this clarity from Jason. I really need this clarity, AKA closure, AKA maybe I might change his mind from Jason. No girl, no girl. Y'all know how I feel about going back and getting closure and clarity. Closure of what? The closure was goodbye. The closure was him choosing Liz. That was the closure I would have needed. You bow out gracefully. I wasn't your choice for whatever reason. You know, I wasn't your choice. But you know in your spirit what the reason was because he kept telling you in, in so many words that it was the indecisiveness. And then number two, all this clarity is telling me, or <laughs> all this clarity that you're requiring is telling me that you should have said to him, I want you, I choose you. This is where I wanna be. I wanna see where this can go for me. I could be reading it wrong. And you know, if I'm reading it wrong, you know, based on what we're seeing on the show, not all the shit that you see on the outside, but what you're seeing is happening on the actual show on episode 11, that's how I'm reading. So we back at the lounge and Amber shares that, you know, about um, Chris crying and also shared about him, his semen retention, AKA celibacy. And that that's, you know, that that's something that has given her pause because that's not what she wants to do, right? She's like, we might not get married for two years. I got to wait two years. Honey, she wants to drive the car. Let me see if it drives right. Do I need to, does it need a tune-up? Do we need new tires? Like, uh, what kind of gas? Premium or regular? Like, I need to know. Do you need new windshield wipers? Like, what's up? Vernicia just says, you know what? What we've realized is that we can overcome anything. All right, girl. I think most people can come overcome anything if they're willing to have the conversation and do the work required to move past the thing. So I commend you if that's what's happening for y'all. I mean, yes and yes again. Okay, so Liz, right off top, I'm on cloud nine. You can see it in her face. Um, you can actually see Kyra kind of writhing over there. Um, and she said, you know, <laughs> this has to do, see, so Liz held her shade until now, right? And you know, the earlier, you know, when I need to see why he made the decision in the second, like she was second choice, Liz says, you know, he said that he made his 
his um, decision a couple weeks ago. Ah! Kyra chuckles. Okay, and even if it's the chuckle because you think he's lying or whatever it sounds for, like, you know, some made up stuff, whatever your reason is, it's still disrespectful. It's still not a good look. It's, it does, it's not. Liz went ahead and said the same thing that I wrote right after I wrote it. She was like, yeah, it was disrespectful. She also shares about the white rose and the sentiments behind it. And they've got Kyra looking at her and Kyra looks deflated. You even see that she swallows a little hard because even if you're chuckling after that, when she talks about the white rose that he gave, you can't do nothing but hold your tongue, bide your time. Like right now for me, if it wasn't for sure before or for certain before, this should be for certain that he didn't choose you. I wrote down Liz as a lady. She's the epitome of a lady, of a woman with decorum that knows when to speak, how to speak, um, that chooses her battles wisely. Cause Kyra comes behind her and says, you know what, it wasn't meant to be offensive. and. Liz is nodding her head, just like an agreement, but really just probably like an acceptance because no matter if it wasn't meant to be offensive or disrespectful, it was. Y'all know it, y'all know how... She might've felt bad about it after, but that's how it comes across. Even if her, that wasn't her intent, let's say that. It still comes across as very facetious, very offensive, very... <laughs> Kyra said, you know what, he wasn't being truthful. Him as in Jason was not being truthful and that he was playing a game. And that when they were having conversations, he wasn't discussing celibacy. Cause y'all know, I told y'all he had a lustful spirit early on. So it makes sense that that's not the conversation that he was having with Kyra cause Kyra wasn't celibate. He's having the conversations with the ladies according to what, um, they want to hear. Ain't that what y'all do? Play up the things that we like. And so we have to be careful. And that's why it's important to date more than one person. So that you don't focus on them. And be caught up in some shit that they just playing. Because they heard what you said. And they can read your energy and your spirit. That's what this fella is doing. He's definitely saying the things that they need to hear at the time they need to hear them. And they have to be able to decipher what is real and what is not. She also said, you know what, if your decision was made so long ago, why would you continue to talk to me? Why wouldn't you tell me so? Why wouldn't you tell me I'm with her? If your decision was made a long time ago, sir, leave me alone so I can focus on somebody else. Not only that, she was just like, my decision shouldn't impact you if you've already made your decision. So Liz ain't got nobody left is what she said. I got somebody left and you trying to press me to make a decision and I'm not ready. And what that makes me feel like is you're going to mishandle me in, in real life. Not just here on the show that you will mishandle me. The end. So y'all, how y'all feel about that? Like I can see her point, right? But I don't think he was pressing her in the way I saw it. I don't feel like he was pressing her or forcing her to make a decision that she would have had to make in two episodes. I feel like he wanted to know genuinely so that he could make the right decision for himself. That's how I feel. Like I want to know if you still like me and if you want to move forward with me because I still like you. That's how I read it. But she sees it as he was playing a game. You forcing me. You know, feels like a little manipulation, a little pressure, and you're going to do that shit in real life. You're not going to handle me with care. Y'all let me know what you think about that down below in the comments. So then time, time blah, blah, blah. So then Tommy says that, you know what, Kyra deserves another conversation with Jason. So that she can get the clarity that she needs. Okay. He asked her, so if you had to choose somebody today, who are you choosing? She reluctantly feels, reluctant, she reluctantly, it felt like, said, I'm rocking with AJ. So, I feel like this could be the end right here. Four couples and that's it, right? That's, I mean, because as we said, nobody is leaving, y'all all matched up, four couples. I mean, ain't this the same thing that was last year, wasn't it four couples? Or was that the year before? Whichever year it was, we had four couples. Ah, but they said, we're going to do something different. 
next week there's going to be a dinner and at the dinner you guys have to make a commitment uh both of you have to decide to move forward as a committed couple it'll be the dinner with the final decision that's what he said i was like oh that is different but they're gonna all be together round table and i'm gonna be like i choose you i don't choose you that'd be kyra and aj child they're the only two people that's gonna have an issue uh venetia says how y'all feeling kyra says i got a little bit of an attitude because jason wasn't fair towards her y'all tell me weird tell me how help me understand it help me understand it like i'm i'm all for us um for the fairness of things so y'all help me understand it like i need to understand point it out to me give me some bullet points one here two here three here because i think that he's been the same lustful spirit the entire time so for now it seems like he's starting to change right i'm Y'all know, y'all know I be needing help with stuff. And so this is one of those things I need help with. Help me understand what I'm missing. And so Amber asked the same question that I'm thinking. So since you have an attitude about Jason, are you just choosing AJ for the sake because he chose you? Hello, Amber. Ask the question because you a lawyer. Ask the question to the lawyer so that the lawyer understands what you're asking. Because that is a question that anybody with logical thinking, rational thinking, one, two, three, analytical thinking would have asked. And she said, no, I choose him. I choose AJ. So I'm going to just share something. This is something that I know to be true. Okay, I know they don't love each other, but they care and that they like and they were interested. When you have disinterest, it's not hate. It's not attitude. It's not... I despise that person. The opposite of love or like or interest is not disinterest, right? Where you speaking on somebody, it is indifference. It is where you care not anymore. But Liz, you can see Liz over there stoic with a smirk on her face. And what we find out is that, you know, she's uncomfortable with her over there trying to assassinate Jason's character because the Jason she knows has not been the Jason that Kyra knows. So we see Jason and Kyra, they go and sit down and they have a talk. She walks, he walks in, she's sitting down. He's all like, hey, how you doing queen? To me that sound like a little uneasy, like a little nervous list, like what is this about? Why did you want to meet me? And they're meeting right after the lounge. He said in his diary, Pam, you know what? I made my choice. Um, and I'm not going, I don't want to renege on it, but they're sitting there at the table and he's got her hands in his hands. I don't know. I got one of my best guy friends that I've known since I was 17 years old. When we're talking and having a serious conversation, we aren't holding hands over the, <laughs> over the fucking table. Okay. Like she asked him, why didn't you share with me that you made your decision over two weeks ago? Or we made your decision weeks ago. And he says, you know, so much has been said since then. I can't say yay or nay, but I did tell her recently that I made my decisions weeks ago, and I'm sorry about that. He lied to Liz. He lied to Liz to reassure her, to comfort her. What'd I just say a minute ago? What'd I just say? People say the things that they think you need to hear in the moment. Don't tell me what you think I need to hear. I can handle, I can sort out my own feelings. You know what I'm saying? Tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. In love and kindness, tell me the truth. She talks about, you know, her feeling pressured or whatever. And he said that, or no, maybe she didn't. Hold on. He just explains that at the tennis court that he needed clarity. And for me, like I said, I told y'all a minute ago, I didn't feel like it was pressure. That he needed clarity about the direction that she was going and what she wanted to do. Just like she needs clarity right now. It's no different. And what in this moment as they're sitting in there having a conversation, I realize what's happening is it's the lawyer in her weighing all her options. Because he said that when they were dating, it felt more, he said the, it was the wrong word, of, but interrogation. But it was a lot of questions. And it wasn't her being in the moment. That is one of the biggest things that I tell my friends and all my clients. When you on a date, be here now. Be in the moment. That's the same shit I say about meetings. Be here now, not somewhere else. Be where you're supposed to be so that you can get the connection. And he didn't feel like she was in the moment, that she was asking a lot of questions. And she was like, it was more of like, what is... So he was like, and I'm trying to figure out what, what, what we're doing here now. 
what is it you're trying to tell me? I mean, you and I both see that it feels like she's trying to say that, that I want to be with you and why did you choose her? For me, that's how I feel. It might not feel like that for you. I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. All of this tells me that she really wanted to be with him. She said that it felt like he was checking out. It went back to I needed to, you know, do this whole all see it all the way through and it felt like you were checking out. He said, no, 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 sis. No, 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 queen. Come on back in. What is it that you want? What is it that you want? Kyra. They say your name. They serious. If I had said what you needed to heard or if it was said differently, relayed to you differently, would the outcome be different? He said, I'm confident in what I have with Liz. I'm confident in Liz. Like, cause she's been consistent, right? Um, and so then she reluctantly says, then I, you know, I would want to remain friends. And he said, you know, thank you. Right. But again, are you looking for him to say that it would have been differently, that he would have chose differently? And then what would have happened? Would you have chosen him back? Would you have said, yes, I wanted this, blah, blah, blah. He asked her, do you feel better now? You know, now that you got the closure, you heard what you wanted to hear. Are you finished? She was like, no. He said, why? I hate, she said, I hate that our discourse allowed the opportunity for someone else to move in. That's someone else's list right so it should have been i don't know i don't know what discourse they had but maybe your indecisiveness she looks so like disheartened and she says it in her little diary cam that her that you know it hurts a little bit it, i ain't gonna lie it hurts a little bit is what she says lawyers want to win lawyers are competitive and here's my here's my one piece of advice no matter what it is say how you feel if you feel like you like somebody and you want you're scared i've been hurt before say that say that listen nobody wants to be hurt nobody wants to have to heal from that shit. but if you do you do if you have to heal from it you will we cannot be afraid to say how we feel because someone else isn't feeling the way we feel we are responsible for us our emotions, thoughts, ideas, feelings, it is us. I'm just saying, it be scary. It's not always easy, but you feel better for being honest with yourself and being able to move on with a clear heart because you've done what you were supposed to do. Then she went on to say that she now thinks that Jason is who she should have been watching or questioning and not AJ. That she... Do y'all think that he was playing with her? playing with our heart, playing games. Y'all let me know down below in the comments. Cause I really think he genuinely did like her. Everybody's on the rooftop. Uh, it appears to be this last dinner hookup, but this don't look like a dinner. This is like cocktail hour. Everybody looks great. Except for Venetia in that green cutout dress. Everybody else, let me say, let me. I'm saying that wrong, but that's what I said. I said what I said. Let me not let me not renege on that because that's how I feel. I didn't like her dress. It did not seem elevated enough with them white boots. Um, you know, everybody else looked very much so appropriate for the occasion. Even Joel with his jeans and his t-shirt and his blazer. Sexy doesn't always mean revealing, ladies. Sexy isn't always revealing. We can be sexy with all our clothes on. Kyra said that she looked over at Jason and Liz and she said she was irritated that that dude got under her skin. She still has feelings about him. She feels like he played her, like she put her heart on her sleeves, like she wore her heart and expressed herself and that he played her. And he even told her in the sit down like, hey, you know, you think you shared with me? You thought you were being 100? It didn't come off that way. She then goes on to say, you know what? I like AJ, but I'm not ready. I don't think I'm ready to be committed. No, ma'am, you're not. You're not ready because you still got your mind on Jason and you got to, you, that little hurt you got, that little scorn you have in your spirit needs to be worked through. Tommy comes up. Um, says, looks like everybody is paired up. Hey, you know, I like this, but listen, we got one more thing. I thought we was going to be finished and done and we was getting ready to go to the reunion and get the real tea. Um, but he's all like, you need to meet their parents. You need to meet their mothers, not their parents, their mothers. Okay. Their mothers, their families. Um, and it is a huge step when you meet somebody's family. Uh, there has not been many people that have met my family. My husband, 
met my family. My oldest son's father met my family. My youngest son's father has met my family. All the people in between, AJ feels like it's too soon to meet his parents. Um, Amber says she's a lot, and so just imagine her family is a lot. And then Kyra's like tells AJ, listen, once you meet my mother, if you meet my mother, she has to give the approval. And if she says no, then it's a no. She could essentially just say, my mama said she didn't like you. And it'd be done with. Anyway, y'all, so we got one more episode before we start with the um, reunions, which we look forward to. Is it only one reunion or is it two? Is it one part or two part? Maybe it's only one part. Anyway. Y'all let me know down below in the comments what you thought about this episode. Yes, down below in the comments. Let me know, let me know, let me know. Thank you so much for watching my review of Ready to Love season four, episode number, what was this, 11? We are gonna go with that. If it's your first time visiting my channel, click the subscribe button to become a ray of sunshine. Uh, next to that is a notification bell. Click it so that you're alerted of the videos I upload moving forward. Um, also share it with your friends. We've got a few times left and you can share it with your friends and go back and check out the old videos and do some commenting there. Like I be commenting. I know I owe comments. Don't be looking for number eight because I'm not coming back with episode eight. I'm just going to tell y'all now. I'm just not. I didn't have my home girl in real life ask me about eight and I was like, we on 11 or it was 10 last week. Anyway, um, I told y'all I like the video. I told y'all to share the video. Okay, well, listen, I love you in real life and want every good thing that God has in store for you, even if you don't know what that is for yourself. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I'll catch you on the next review.